This is Geometry, Chapter 11, Section 4, in which we will study the areas of regular polygons and composite figures. Okay. When we're dealing with the regular polygons, I want you to think about a regular polygon. Of course, that means all the sides are equal and all the angles are equal. And it's inscribed in a circle. So the circle goes through all the vertices like you see down here. And I picked a hexagon just because it was easiest to put together. The center and the radius of the circle are going to be the same as for the polygon. So the center of the polygon will be in this same place. A line drawn from the center to say this vertex here would also be the radius of the circle. Now if I take a segment from the center and draw it in perpendicular to one of the sides, that's called the apothem of the polygon. Only a regular polygon has an apothem. Okay. And that measurement, that apothem, is crucial to finding the area of the polygon. Okay. Now, you already know what a central angle is for a circle. For a polygon, it's the same idea. It's an angle from the center, but it's connecting two consecutive vertices. So in an a, uh, just in a circle, a central angle could be any size. Okay? In a polygon, it has to connect with two consecutive vertices. So the central angle is always the same size for that polygon. And the measure of that angle okay, is always 360 divided by n. In this case, I've got a hexagon, so it's 360 divided by 6. So each one of the angles here is 60. If I drew in this radius, and drew in this radius, and drew in each one of those angles would be 60 degrees. Okay, 360 divided by the number of sides. Now, the way you find the area of a regular polygon, and they say n gone here because we're using n for the number of sides. It's one half times the apothem times the perimeter. So area, capital A, equals one half times A, little a, the apothem, times P, the perimeter. Okay. Now I've broken the formula down into the steps you need to take. The first thing you need to do is draw in a central angle and figure out the measure of it. We did that on the last page, 360 divided by n. Then draw in the apothem. The apothem does two things. It bisects the side and it bisects the central angle. Our job then is to figure out the apothem, and we can do that using tangent. And I'll show you that on the next page here. Then we need to figure out the perimeter. That's just add up all the sides. And then plug into our formula. Okay. And I've got that on, on your note page for you, so you have it to work from. Okay. So they've given me a regular octagon with a side length of 8 inches. And that's all the information they have to tell us for us to be able to figure out the area. Okay. Step 1 is to figure out the central angle, which I've drawn in. 380, uh, 360 divided by 8 is 45. Now, when I draw in the apothem, 
is going to bisect that angle. So this 45 degree angle here gets cut in half to make 22. It also bisects this side. Well, if the side was 8, then it leaves a 4 there, and we're looking for the apothem. So tangent of our angle, 22 and a half, equals 4 over A. Well, the good news is this is a problem we know how to deal with. Do a little cross multiplying, and then divide by that 0.414 that I got out of my calculator, and I have an apothem equal to 9.662. Okay. Step three is find the perimeter. There's eight sides. Each of them are eight inches. So my perimeter is 64. And now just put it into the formula. One half times the apothem times the perimeter. And we get a final answer of just over 309 square inches. Four steps to go through in the problem. You can do it. I believe in you. You can handle this. Just refer back to that third slide and it will tell you exactly what to do. Now the other thing we need to talk about are what's called composite figures. A composite figure is just something that you can break down into smaller pieces. And then, like we talked about earlier in the chapter, the area of something like that is equal to the sum of the areas of all the parts. Okay. So our job here is to find the area of this shape. thought that's what I did. So I'm going to draw in some lines to break this thing into pieces that I can work with. And I'm going to draw in specifically one line. Okay. Now I see two parts and I know how to find the area of both of those parts. Okay. I chose this direction just because I could. I could have just as well drawn across this way. For that matter, I could draw in another line right here if I wanted to, and then I'd have one, two, three sections. Okay. And all I did was two sections here because I see I've got a rectangle and I've got a trapezoid. And I know how to find the areas of both of those. Well, area of section 1, the rectangle, is 8 times 12. Okay. Now, for section 2, the 12 is this base, the 5 is this one, and for the height, we need to know how far it is from here to here. Well, if this part is 8, what does that leave here? 7. So 7 is the height. 1 half times 5 plus 12 times 7. Punching into my calculator using parentheses carefully, I get the area of section 2. And then add the two chunks together and that's the total area. Put those back in their homes. Now, there's no one way to do these. You could just as easily draw something like this and add this extra chunk on, find the area of the extra chunk, and subtract it. Okay, some problems will work out better that way. If we did this, then we have a rectangle that's 12 times 15. And we have a triangle here that's 7 by 7. So 1 half 7 times 7. And then if we subtract this part off, that will leave us this area. And we should get the same answer. 
Okay, you have options. Some problems it will be easier to subtract on, some it will be easier to add. How can you tell? Just by looking at it and seeing which way you want to go. You can probably get through all the problems doing them by addition, or you could do them all by subtraction, or you can mix and match. Okay, I don't think there's any that are just dead set that this is the only way to do it. So it's really kind of up to you. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.